we're gathered in this exquisite venue to celebrate the publication of the four-volume Cambridge History of Ireland. It's a very timely moment to address the, the, the History of Ireland as a general survey, if you like, uh, gathering together a synthesis of scholarship um, that has emerged over the last 40 years since the new History of Ireland was first commissioned which took, of course, 40 years to do. This has happened in four years, which is nothing short of a miracle. And it means the editors really know what they're doing, get on with each other very well. None of these things are taken for granted in the history world, but they have achieved it. Uh, but I think that the general population, as well as academia, are going to find them incredibly stimulating, full of, of information they haven't had before, full of angles, interpretations and opinions that they haven't seen before. And I think it will be an, an immensely popular project and deservedly so. I'm truly honoured to present the Cambridge History of Ireland to you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, hopefully the fact that so many people are gathering together today to celebrate the Cambridge History of Ireland suggests that it really was a good idea. And so it seemed to make sense to build on what we have. So we, we, we like to think that we have a very strong uh, presence in, the, in Irish history publishing. When I mentioned to some colleagues about five years ago that uh, Cambridge University Press had asked me to head up a, a new project, a Cambridge History of Ireland in four volumes, their reaction was pretty uniform. You've got to be kidding was the first one. Why is another one, and you cannot be serious with a third. I think one of the objectives of histori a good historian is to try to be faithful and honourable to the people in the past. Not that they're all likeable. There have been enormous people in the past you would be able to actually you know, indicate if you had the opportunity, no, I would not really want you as a dinner companion for an evening. Um, you might like to be in a situation which you could simply pose questions to them, but uh, nonetheless, I think we have to try and provide some sort of justification, or provide some explanation of what, 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 what they were, um, uh, uh, what motivated them, whether that was whether the, the, the goals to which drove them are ones to which we concur with or don't concur with, or whether they're the ones that are ex echoed by society today or, re or reprobated by society today. I mean, I grew up in a, in a house uh, full, of, full of books, full of history books. My father was a, a physician, uh, but um, I think he would have secretly loved to have been a, a historian. Uh, the land of saints and scholars is probably still a phrase that, that many Irish people, both in Ireland and abroad, uh, would recognise. So what volume one of the Cambridge History of Ireland offers instead is an answer to the question, what was medieval Ireland like? Everybody bows to the past, but we're no longer bound by it. And I think that's a very significant transformation that has gone on at the turn of the 21st century. And these volumes capture that. They capture a moment uh, uh, in the history of our nation. History is crucial. It's what, it, what memory is to man. Um, if you've no memory, um, as I can attest, <laughs> you're, you're going to find yourself adrift in a sea. And today we celebrate an important addition to the tradition of history writing in Ireland. And indeed, perhaps, some of the younger historians in this room will come to revise anew these volumes. And that, I believe, will be the measure of our success in the coming years.